Hello again. I'm sure that we have all noticed there is a fashion for casting black people in films, television, dramas and advertisements because this makes the things look modern and in keeping with the spirit of the age. Partly this is self-interest on the part of the producers because all white dramas are unlikely to be wanted for export to the United States, which is a big market that stuff produced in Britain. And also because it looks good to pretend that you are engaged in colour-blind casting. This is all harmless enough, if a little irritating. But like most such fads, it will probably pass with time. It is becoming a little out of hand, of course, lately. The thumbnail to this video shows a character from a new and humorous series set in Tudor London. This is called My Lady Jane, and the black guy making an obscene gesture, giving the finger, as it is colloquially known, is supposed to be King Edward VI. As I say, this kind of thing is harmless enough, and nobody really believes that such casting has been done purely on merit. It's designed to make a statement. It's a show. Of course, it cannot really affect anybody if a person is chosen to play Edward VI in a television comedy, just because he belongs to a visible minority. But the case is quite different when people are chosen to run countries for that reason. The scope for harm then is immense. In the last year, we've had First Ministers in Scotland and Wales and the Prime Minister of Britain all of whom belonged to visible minorities and had not been elected. All three were, not too fine a point on it, useless, and it rather looked as though they had been selected for the same reason that black people have bunged into so many television programmes, because people think it looks very modern and up-to-date to have somebody of African or South Asian heritage in the top job looking highly visible. When you do this in a historical drama on the television, the worst possible outcome might be bad acting. But when people are responsible for important decisions and managing vast sums of money, that can be a little more serious. It's not, of course, that a black person or an Indian or Pakistani cannot be as intelligent as a white person or as capable of running things. The problem lies elsewhere. In the first place, when you wish to select the best person for any job in Britain, there is a vast number of white people to choose from, which means that because there's a far greater field, you're more likely to find the perfect fit for the role among them. In the case of black people with professional backgrounds or experience in this or that field, the number is much, much smaller, and so you have essentially less choice. The same applies, of course, to people from Indian or, uh, Indian or Pakistani ancestry. With a smaller field to choose from, the chances of finding an excellent fit are greatly reduced. This is simply a statistical artefact. There is another point, which is that people whose ancestry lies outside Britain often tend to have a more tenuous grasp on the correct protocols and conventions which surrounds some political role. We saw this last month when Vaughan Gething lost a vote of confidence in uh, the Welsh Parliament and didn't seem to realise that this meant that tradition dictated that he should resign. He's now been forced out, but I honestly don't think he understood the significance of a vote of confidence in a way that a British person born and bred here and versed in political life might have done. We saw something similar the other day with Clive Lewis, the newly elected MP for Norwich South. He refused to swear the oath of allegiance to King Charles and his heirs and successors when all the other MPs were taking the oath, and so yesterday he finally had to do so on threat of not being able to sit in Parliament. You see, he simply did not appreciate the conventions and so felt free to behave differently to everybody else. 
I'm happy for television producers to cast people of colour in their shows to show how progressive they are, but I do have reservations when this game is played in British politics. The stakes are a good deal higher, and I'm not sure that we ought to be giving people the job of actually running countries simply because it makes us feel virtuous and anti-racist.